<laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call uh, this meeting, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of the uh, Town of Thompson Planning and Zoning Commission Subcommittee on Subdivision Regulation to order. It is uh, Wednesday, March 2nd, 2022 at 7 p.m. We are meeting via Zoom. And uh, uh, we've got uh, Mr. Hill present, Mr. Williams present, uh, staff and uh, citizens. Jane uh, is here too, if you didn't see her. I'm sorry, I did not see her. Yes, Ms. Salsi is here as well. Thank you, Tira. Um, and so we will begin with, uh, continue with the uh, revision of the subdivision regulations. Yeah, so just to, before we get into the um, back into the text, I have uh, a little bit of email feedback, um, some of which uh, I received in response to Ray's request to reach out to, you know, some of the developers and some of the engineers. Um, and I have also um, an email from the Conservation Commission, well, from Dan Malo on behalf of the Conservation Commission. I think he sent that to all of you guys as well, but I'll just read those in. It'll give some of the latecomers time to come in as well. Uh, and then it'll be part of the recording. So it'll just take an, an extra couple of minutes. Uh, so from Dan Malo on behalf of the Conservation Commission, um, good afternoon all. Per the Conservation Commission's discussion on proposed subdivision regulation drafts dated 2-22-22. Oh, they did it on Tuesday. Uh, waivers to subdivision regulations previously required PNZ to state the reason for the waiver. This was struck. It should be retained as a requirement of state statute. Regarding the town's free access to the site, this is problematic from an inspectional enforcement standpoint. Customary practice is that we must ask for permission or be invited. A change to 20 foot easements instead of 10 feet for pedestrian and open space is welcome. This will provide consistency with other types of easements which require 10, uh, 20 feet. Regarding shared drives versus private roads, from a conservation perspective, shared drives reduce the number of curb cuts. Regarding 50 foot marker spacing for easement marking, the 50 foot maximum distance is necessary to identify the boundary line point to point. The energy conservation design recommendations section was stricken but should be retained. Apparently a digital data requirement was removed. It should be retained since town documents will eventually receive digitization. Wetlands agent Marla Butts and I have talked about the need to make the definition of impervious surface consistent with other town regulations. And the town is also undergoing a reorganization, renumbering of its codes, ordinances, and regulations. How will this document be affected? All the best, Dan Malo, conservation agent. Um, and also, it, just for clarity, all of these comments that I've received when we get back to that stage where we're moving to discussion memos for the whole commission. Uh, I will include everything that I've received via email up to that point, um, as we did with the zoning regulations. So this will all be repeated later uh, in written form for the full commission. Okay, this one came from Daniel Blanchett of JND Civil Engineers. Uh, where are we here? Oh, here we go. Uh, good afternoon, Tira. I just read through Article 4 of the new subdivision regulations. Overall, I am in favor of the changes. I think these new regulations will be good for the town. It will encourage development, but in a responsible manner, consistent with the rural character of the town. The new regulations are more similar to those of other nearby towns like Killingly and Woodstock, making Thompson more competitive. Currently, the town has many lots that contain large amounts of acreage, but with very little frontage on a public road. Previously, in order to develop these sites, it was required to construct a new public road to provide frontage. This adds a lot of expense for the developer and also burdens the town with additional roads to maintain. With the new language regarding shared driveways and interior lots, some of these parcels can be developed without the need for new roads. The construction costs are smaller, which allows for cheaper prices of homes. Uh, 
having shared driveways is also good for the environment. They reduce the amount of tree cutting and impervious surface, improving stormwater quantity and quality. And since the town will not be required to maintain these shared driveways, the town will gain additional tax revenue without the additional expense of maintenance. My biggest concern is that the language on page 48 regarding open space is pretty vague, which will cause confusion. It says the commission may exclude any wetlands from the open space. Theoretically, if I was designing a five lot subdivision on a large property that was 85% wetlands and the commission suddenly decided the open space could not include wetlands, my client would probably lose a few lots. This would be a very big detrimental change after the project has been designed. I recommend the commission consider specifying what land can be in the open space. In many towns, the open space can have the same percentage of wetlands and steep slopes as the entire parcel. If I am subdividing a property that is 40% wetlands, then 40% of my open space can be wetlands. Or maybe the town could pick a flat rate. For example, 50% of the open space can be wetlands. Whatever the exact number, having this defined will be better for engineers and developers. Thanks, Daniel Blanchett. PE, J and D Civil Engineers, LLC. Uh, let's see, and then um, Janet is here uh, and I thought we could actually lead off with some of her general comments, but I'll read the bullet points that she sent me today. And then um, I, I think we can hear a little bit from her and then dive in and, uh, and continue apace as we have. Uh, Hi, Tara. I will sign into the Zoomer this evening to talk in person, but here are some bullet points about the topics I have comments on. Encouraging private streets is risky because the town could eventually be asked by the residents to take ownership of the road if it was constructed poorly or their homeowners association lacks funding. If private streets are permitted, the construction standards should be the same as for public roads in terms of the typical cross section, drainage, etc., although the roads could be narrower. Also, any documents creating owners associations should be reviewed by the town attorney or the town should develop a standard legal document. Shared driveways should be allowed since they can substantially reduce the amount of land disturbance. It makes me crazy when I see two or three long driveways right next to each other. It is so inefficient and bad for the environment. I previously recommended that the PZC consider Killingly's good shared driveway language. If there is concern about its practical application, I suggest that someone from Thompson call the Killingly planner, CEO, or town engineer to discuss it. In addition, I suggest that the town ask its attorney to develop a standard shared driveway easement slash maintenance slash association form that will be required. Cul-de-sacs or dead-end roads. Thompson has a lot of developable land with minimal frontage. Limiting cul-de-sacs to 1,000 feet will not enable this land to be developed. The length of the road, the, the length of road and numbers of dwelling units should be discussed. Yes, emergency vehicle access is important, but limiting the length of roads or number of dwelling units for an emergency, tree or utility down over road or accident that blocks entire road and shoulder road, that has a very infrequent chance of recurring is short-sighted. Utilities are underground in new subdivisions, so power lines being down is a non-issue. The definitions are very important and should be reviewed by the town attorney. What differentiates a loop road, what differentiates a loop road from a cul-de-sac? Also for LID and reducing pavement, I like islands and cul-de-sacs. Sizes could be specified which work with plowing. And then lastly, without municipal sewers, cluster and or conservation subdivision won't, won't be substantially different from conventional subdivisions with lot sizes of 40,000 square feet septic systems require land. Even with good soil, lots need to be about a minimum of 30,000 square feet for traditional leaching structures. Lot sizes can be a bit smaller with new technology leaching systems, however, with new technology leaching systems. However, they can only be used with very good soil. And those were Janet's comments. And um, Janet is here. So do you guys wanna hear from her uh, now before we get into the text itself? Yeah, I think so. Take it away, Janet. Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure if that was clear since I just quickly sent some bullet points, but um, I think that the type of road is different from the ownership of a road. So those are two separate issues. It's kind of like a cul-de-sac 
is potentially a subset of a dead end road. But um, if there's a road that goes in for say 800 feet and then it's split and you can go either left or right and it makes a large loop and say there's 10 house lots in the middle. Is that a cul-de-sac? Um, years ago, the town actually got sued over that definition and Alvin probably even remembers that. So I think it needs to be really clear what the definitions are um, and potentially have sketches in the regulations because if you just stop at a thousand feet and you have you know 150 feet of frontage on both sides of the road, that's not that's not very many lots at all. So it, there's not that many properties that can have a true loop road going through it. Um, Donovan Drive uh, up in the northern part of town in Quinnebog is an exception. That's a kind of a rare exception that a road actually was able to come in, loop, and go out. Most of our larger properties, uh, or many of the larger properties in Thompson, you would not be able to do that. So if you want to get to the interior, um, going more than a thousand feet, I, I would recommend that. I think that the thousand foot limit was initially put in for the thought of emergency vehicles because they don't want a lot of people stranded back there. And, and, and that is a very important consideration, but you do just have to think of, of statistics. You know, what is the likelihood that the whole entire road is gonna be blocked and then there's a fire that you can't get to by chainsawing out a tree in 10 minutes, you know, it's, it, it just seems like that's a very short distance to me. And, and in fact, Tira forwarded a PDF on some green standards. Uh, I forget what, I, I'm sorry, I forget the exact name, but just an example of conservation subdivisions that were being promoted in Pennsylvania. And if you look at those examples of good environmentally friendly ways to develop land, they absolutely go much further in than, than a thousand feet. And they'll have, um, 30, 40, 50 houses, um, whether it be a traditional cul-de-sac with a, you know, a closed bulb end, or whether it be a loop configuration, you know, a lollipop type. Thanks, Janet. You're welcome. Did anybody have any questions on any of that for Janet before we dive in? No, is that the, um the the you had sent us a bunch of resources on friday that's the first one you had sent us is that right the truth it, is it, it is and i was just trying to pull it up to to screen share that briefly because i just think the illustration is so great um just bear with me and i'll see if i can pull it up here it was behaving strangely when i tried to share it let's try that again there we go this time, I think it'll, you guys see that? So those are some different configurations, but um, what Janet was referring to was this. So this is an example of a conservation subdiv subdivision design that has a lot of open space set aside and then in the context of the document, it was talking about the steps and you don't even put in the, the streets until you're at step three in the process, according to this sort of guidebook. So you can see here, and there are these bulbed cul-de-sacs that split off. And create sort of the ability in this kind of design to avoid cutting into the set asides and you can kind of see where the open space is set aside where the little dotted lines are. Well, that's where the edges of, of lots are. So anything outside the, the lot lines. So I just thought that was super interesting. Um, now, Janet, you said you were going to hang out tonight and um, be available for comment on some of this because we are getting into the driveway stuff. Yeah, yes, I'll stay on for the whole meeting. You are so good. 
All right, so let's share a new screen. I'm gonna close this window and I'm gonna share. Okay, so this is where we left off. Uh, for some reason I can't, there we go. Uh, so picking up with artic uh, article four, section two, letter K easements. Um, and as for those of us who are joining for the first time, which would be Janet and uh, I think Linda is in the audience as a citizen. Uh, we're just going from where we have comments because we've already been through this in a first, uh, a first round go through. So this is just where we have open questions still. And a lot of these comments uh, were contributed by Marla um, and some of them are carried over from my initial sets of comments. We've got some in here from uh, Janet's previous review and Dave Held's previous review. Uh, and we're gonna skip anything that's just language or grammatical because uh, I'll take care of that later. We just really wanna get to the content. Uh, but we do have a comment on one of these easements. So let's just read the base text. Easements for access to and use of land or other necessary rights or restrictions of use of land outside of a street right of way shall be provided as required or approved by the commission and shall be shown on the record subdivision map with adequate survey information so that the land subject to easement may be accurately located by field survey. Easements may be required in the following types of cases as applicable to the particular subdivision. So under here, under letter D, where it says easements for identification of points or areas of storm drainage spillage rights from streets when storm drainage conduit systems are not to be installed. And Marla's comment here is consider replacing points or areas of storm drainage spillage with stormwater discharge. Suggest Rich Benoit check for the correct terminology to be used for storm drainage conduits systems. Um, so Janet, actually, you might have some insight there yourself. Okay. Uh, Marlowe's language is better. Storm, storm water, water discharge. discharge. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Now here's uh, G, the easements for pedestrian cycling or equestrian paths to open spaces, parks, playgrounds, schools, yada, yada, yada. Such easements shall be not less than 20 feet wide. Uh, Marla had a question, was 10 feet not enough, which was I believe what the prior um, language indicated. And as, uh, as I just read in the response from the Conservation Commission, they are in favor of the easements being not less than 20 feet wide to make them um, consistent with other types of easements described. Um, do we have any other thoughts on that? This is Cindy. The only thought I have on that is um, many complaints come into the zoning office that people that don't belong to any association or shouldn't even be there, don't have easements, take their um, their bikes and their motorcycles and their RVs and they go in and use the land. So I don't know how that violation of using somebody else's land would affect this, but that's my only comment to that. I mean, I understand why he's saying the 20 feet. I get it. Whether it's 20 feet, five feet or 10 feet, if somebody wants is going to try to get into somebody's land, they're going to get into it. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I guess my my res my gut response to that is I don't think it's the width of the easement. If they're ten feet now and people are right. getting in there, they're right. ten feet now. That that doesn't seem to be the determining factor. So, so I guess what I'm saying is, how do you protect the homeowners from um from people going onto the property that should not be on the property and actually destroying the property with their vehicles? And I'm just wondering, you know, if any other town has addressed that um, or if that's an issue or should we make an issue of it? And when it happens, just dump it in on, on the CEO's desk. <laughs> so. 
So I just wonder if something in the easement um, deed, you know, language could protect the homeowners from that type of invasion from people that don't belong there. Kira. Yes. Wouldn't that be considered trespassing? Yeah. But I mean, that, yeah, but I mean, how do you stop somebody that's going to trespass? I, it's a police, yeah. it's a police matter. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we know how helpful they are. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's, <laughs> we, we cannot, yeah. you know, we can't stop somebody if they're set on going onto somebody else's property. That's a, yeah. that's a matter for the police. No, I understand that. I get it. I get it. So I don't think any language is going to make a, you know, matter if they're they're going to do it. Well, so, well, if, if it, it's if it's in the language that those homeowners are protected against invasion like that, um, trespassing on the property, then that's more meat for the police department. Well, I mean, it, it's trespassing somebody else's property. It's yeah. trespassing. Period. Right. That's law. Right. Okay, that was just my comment. Okay. Kira? Yes. I think the uh, the width on an easement should be relative to the quality of the surface. I mean, a 10 foot wide, well compacted surface could handle almost anything. 20 feet wide is could be very expensive. I mean, nowhere in in easements do we describe the quality of the surface. Could be muddy. I mean, there's a lot of things to consider. Right, right. And these are obviously various types of easements that are discussed in, in these letters. Uh, and each of them might have different requirements, some of which I believe are addressed in other areas, like stuff in the section where um, uh, uh, stormwater management, I, I, you know, that gets into quite a bit of dimensional detail, as I recall. So we may find that that is in there. Um, although it does reference it up here too, easements for use and access to stormwater basins and fire ponds, such easements shall be not less than 20 feet wide. That should not be capitalized. Um, we're describing we're describing for pedestrian walking, cycling, Horse, equestrians. Again, it comes down to surface quality. So you you mean just in ca in the case of this letter, the surface quality? I see. I see what you're saying. Uh, why not set a minimum to a max? Why not a, say a minimum of twelve feet to a maximum of twenty foot wide, and let the developer determine that depending on the quality of the of the soil. All right, so I have that comment. Anybody else have any thoughts there? I would agree with that, uh, Alvin on that because 20 feet is kind of wide for um, an easement for a pedestrian or cycling. Even uh, for horses, even, you know, that- um, that's, that's pretty that, wide. <laughs> that, that's, that's real wide. And if we set a minimum to a maximum, the plan itself, before the commission. Yeah, I, I agree with contract. you on that, Alvin. Yeah, let the contractor determine that. Yeah. Okay, all right. I th think I've got all those comments. Anybody else uh, wanna weigh in there before we move to the next item? Yeah, hey, I would just say, I, I, um, I'm, I'm interested by Alvin's relation to the width and the and the quality of the surface. I think that's a an interesting point. Let's, go, let's see what's next. That's just a language thing. I'm not concerned about that one. All right, let's talk about driveways. Okay. Uh, just before just before that uh, Tira yeah. Uh, back up just above two easements called J easements for pipe systems. J right there. Yep. What are we talking about? 
Uh, well, it's just it's just one of this list of easements of types of easements that could be considered, right? So let's go back and read the top. Easements may be required in the following types of cases as applicable to the particular subdivision. And this, it's just literally a list of types of easements. Uh, in some cases, they include descriptions that the easements shall be not less than 20 feet wide or 25 feet in the case of uh, letter E. But it's just identifying where one might see an easement on a plan and what the purpose of that easement might be. It doesn't appear see, to I'm have. Like, yeah, go ahead. I, those don't bother me. What what I'm concerned about pipe systems. What type of a pipe system? Oh, Conduit I see. Pipe. I see Storm what you're saying. Pipe systems. I mean, what what are we talking about? If we could identify pipe systems, that would I, make more sense to me. It that that could be water. If you had Connecticut water coming into a subdivision, it could be gas. Yep. Yep. Is this did, and does it, convenience? Sorry. To, sorry, go ahead, Alvin. I was just saying a pipe system. What Janet just said. So we're really talking about utilities here, I think. Right. Yeah. Well, and does this lead into the into Marla's next comment that um, you were um, looking to skip over, Tira? Maybe. So let's take a look at it. Uh, give me one second. Uh, doo -doo -doo. No, easements. Okay, for... yeah. So now it does make more sense. So easements may also be required in the following cases for stormwater pipes and facility, but where natural prescriptive drainage rights must be altered by land subdivision. Easements for pipe system. Okay, so she's just commenting on C. Easements for pipe systems shall be located so that the pipe is positioned at least five feet from the boundary of such easement unless otherwise directed by the commission. Um, so why not strike J? I mean, why, why is it there? <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's a good catch, Alvin. Does anybody disagree with that? So we would strike J and uh, add for pipe systems in the text of two? That is what I am taking from Alvin's comment, yes. Yeah, easements for pipe systems may also be required in the following cases. Yeah. Excuse me. Sneeze again. No, I don't. Uh, this is what I ha get for having six cats and being allergic to cats. I sneeze constantly in my house. Okay. Easements for pipe systems may also be required in the following cases. So we strike that and then, so let's read Just that. Get rid of me. Yeah. So the question is, is, le is number, and I know this is like nitpicky, outline stuff, which we generally say we're not going to go into, but is number two actually letter J? And underneath letter J, we have Roman numerals one, two, and three to describe the specific conditions for pipe systems. Yes. It seems, to make sense, seems to make sense to me. Okay, so I'm going to change this note then. To Why would you do Roman numerals? Why don't you just leave it A, B, and C? Because it, it's the same. It, because once that becomes letter J, it has to be. It has to be a different. Oh, oh, you're going to leave that as letter number two as letter J. Yes. Yeah. It becomes okay. a different a different outline level. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm fine. No, I understand mm -hmm. that. Now. 
That makes sense. Look at that. Style points. Okay, now driveways. And we have our fine gentleman, uh, Mr. Poplowski and Santos in as well. So uh, we can get into this. Now, do we want to go through the whole section on driveways? Um, or do we want to just skip to comments? Well, has the driveway's already been gone through the first time around, except for the comments? It has. Then just go to the comments. Okay, I only say that because driveways is one of the things where we've had a lot of open questions. So, um, but I think I, I'm fine with that. Um, now, Alvin did send me a comment earlier today. Um, and again, we're talking about driveways here. All driveways over 150 feet long shall have a turnaround on the lot capable of handling an SU-30 vehicle and located not less than 10 feet from property lines in residential areas. Alvin suggests adding in parentheses, for example, a conventional school bus as a reference point. Um, I just made the counterpoint that a school bus is unlikely to actually enter a private driveway. So maybe the reference should be to a type of emergency vehicle but what's the equivalent? I don't actually know what an SU-30, is that about the size of a, of a school bus? Well, when you look up the, as I did, what is, I asked what's an SU-30 vehicle? And it said a conventional school bus. That was the definition. Interesting. It's probably uh, length and height. That could be a fire truck. Yeah. It, it's st SU stands for single unit and it's yeah, typically a, a box truck. Box truck, yeah. A single uh -huh. unit box truck, like a furniture delivery truck. Or like a FedEx truck. Yeah, I was just going to say like a FedEx truck. Yeah, a good size one. Yeah, like the box, box FedEx truck, not the vans. Okay, just so that we have the reference in there in a way that makes sense for it being a driveway. Okay, so Sarah, yes. Sarah, just just to go back up. Yeah, um, wherever you want. Go up right there. The the six. Yep. Do you want to put in? I mean, obviously, it just came up uh, Monday night. The state. Oh. I don't know if, if the town Thompson driveway ordinance references back to the state ordinance. Oh, no, no, it ain't the state ordinance. It was the state um, guidelines or whatever it was. DOT guidelines. Yeah. 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 All right. That's a good. But that that's was just on state roads, the one that came up the other state. night. Yeah, that's just state roads, not town roads. Correct. Well, we're uh, doing a driveway on a state road. I mean, wouldn't we want that in here? If we're gonna we're gonna permit a driveway on a state road, right? If that could be yeah, if some, yes, if somebody was putting in a subdivision that had access onto twelve or one ninety three or two hundred, or those are all state routes. Yeah. So yeah, we should we should include language that it, that um, clarifies that. Yeah. Uh, include. Thank you. Good catch. All right, and I'll. Yeah. Two other two other things, if we could, before you move on to your. Wherever you want, uh, you guys. You guys direct me. Otherwise, I'm skipping comment to comment. Uh, before we get to the Roman numerals, back it up where number C, notwithstanding the provisions of Article So, remember yeah, I. I emailed... Yep, I got. I made the change already. That oh, was just from before. It... From before we renumbered the article. So it was a okay. good call, but I've already got it. Okay, now number nine, Roman numeral. All driveways 500 feet long must be provided. 
Oh, we just, you just clipped out, Alvin. What's that? You just clipped out. We didn't catch most of that, or I didn't anyway. Okay. Roman numeral number nine, all yep. driveways are 500 feet long. Okay. At the end of emergency vehicles, and I mean, this is just me talking, <laughs> quite honestly. I like any, because of the snow condition in New England, mm -hmm. a driveway over 500 feet, they're going to be pushing that out somewhere onto the road. I like runouts. My question on that would be also at 300 foot intervals, a runout for snow. So is that a separate item or is that under this item? Now I would, again, we're talking about 500 feet long. Okay, yeah, I, see what, I think I see what you're saying. So let me add a comment. Uh, I mean, the run out could be even 10, a run out of 10 to 12 feet would pack a lot of snow. But at three, I mean, if we had a driveway conceivable to be a thousand feet, wouldn't be a yeah. cul-de-sac, but it's just a driveway. Right. So where driveways are over 500 feet long, you're suggesting? Runouts, at three, three feet. intervals. So at 800 feet, you would have one run, one run out. What, what, I mean, you gotta, you gotta give me a visual what that looks like. So my driveway is 1300 feet long. What, what is, right. what is a run out? Where, what does that mean to me? That's where you, the, uh, trial vehicle, which is probably a pickup truck is going to push the snow on a run out. Say it goes out 10 feet. Yeah where they can park the snow instead of just keep, it's difficult. I mean, my father-in-law's driveway was well over a thousand feet and he had runouts. And you go out west, any of those big highways for state roads, they have a runout where they park the snow. So what do you do, what do, you do with your snow, Brian? I, I, I plow it to I plow it to the sides. <laughs> yeah, that's, I, just, I, I mean, if we're talking about like, I think the question I think the question is more appropriate for what do I do with the snow when I when I reach the road, right? I, do I do I make it a public hazard, right? I, is that what you're is that what you're trying to avoid? Is the public hazard of pushing snow? Into the no, street. we don't have an ordinance like Woodstock has where you cannot push your snow on your property on their roads yeah. or, the, or the state road. Yeah, so you're, you're, you're more talking about public uh, impeding the public way, right? Uh, so uh, again, I take my snow, I push it sometimes into the street, but then I push it onto the sides of the roads. So is, yeah, is the sides, all, are the sides of the roads uh, equivalent to what you're saying here as run out? I, I'm just trying to figure out like where where did this snow where, where is it where, where's the where is this run out? I just see it being a problem, Alvin, for fifty foot you know a fifty foot. Um, well, the driveway foot lot driveway you know fifty foot entrance you know fifty foot like my house fifty feet up. To have runouts and to have, you know, there's going to be there's going to be places where they're going to be going for variances because they can't, you can't fit that in 50 feet. Well, it is it is only talking about drives over 500 feet. Yeah, mine's That's 700. Right. I'm not okay. quite as far as Brian, but Most it, there's a couple sections in here. Well, at 700 Most feet, drive, Most people that plow their driveways just push it off to the side and um if it's flat <laughs> and thompson is not flat hmm. well I, i'm just trying to, i'm trying to divide it up into private property what i do with the snow on my private property i don't think anyone cares unless i'm going on my neighbor's property which is not going to happen right so I think the, the root of the problem here is what do 
those long driveways do with the snow by the road. And I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really trying to wrap my head around this album because I, I, I don't know what a run out is by the public road. So uh, does that, does that mean I put a run out, whatever, 30 run outs? The runouts would be part of, the, say, like uh, Dave's got a 700 foot driveway. Well, my thought is after 500 feet, every 300 feet. So he wouldn't even be concerned with putting a runout. In other words, if it say it was a thousand feet, well, at that 800 foot mark, prior to going out onto a public way, there will be a runout to push the snow. Let's say they have a 12th, we have uh, uh, slopes on driveways that no greater than 12%. Well, so if you have a driveway with series of slopes, you can't, you can't push the snow onto a slope, not too easily. Has this, has this been a problem in the town that people are pushing snow out into the road? Absolutely. That's why Woodstock has a town ordinance precisely because of that. Let me just make a note of that. Woodstock has an ordinance related to this. It, so is, an me... issue. it is an issue because, you know, when the people do it, it damages the town trucks as they come by and hit that. Exactly. That yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. I get that. I mean, where you know, where I live, they don't push it into the roads, obviously, because nobody would be able to pass. Yeah. Um, but I, that's why I asked: <laughs> Has is it a problem? Um, what does? How is? How is Woodstock's ordinance? How, what What is the language in Woodstock's ordinance? How did they put it in? Yeah, I just dropped a note to myself in there um, to take a look at that and see if there's something that's applicable. I I'll tell you what gives me a little pause, Alvin, about what you suggested is that it sounds like there's complexity built into it, right? Every 300 feet and every 300 feet, as, as Brian and Dave and, or Brian and Ray both point out, you know, that might not be necessary if you have that long flat area and you're just pushing precise. it onto your own property. But so then the, com the commission could make that judgment. I think you should can, I share, can I share my screen real quick? I'm just trying to visualize. Yeah, hold on one second. I, yeah. I, I would like to, uh, I'd rather put an ordinance in for not pushing the snow across the road than make somebody put uh, spots to put the snow on their property. And I agree with that. Ray, there you no, you don't push your snow on your property onto town roads. Period. Yeah. End of it. Done. All right. um, so we, without, we, without forcing them to have to make sure, you know, it's just another um uh, verbiage that no, you have to do this on your property. No, just state it. Snow is not to be put in on town property uh, at roads, nothing. Well, period. in de in defense of Alvin's point. Remember, we're talking about subdivision here. So we're talking about something that's being designed prior to ever being owned so that this does not become an issue. So in that sense, no, yeah, I get it, that. it is no, like I get it. Yes. I, I, I think maybe you should look at if you, you know, look at the Woodstock language. Yeah, which I which I dropped that note in. B, what are you what are you showing us here? This is well, your house. obviously. Right, so this is my house. So here's my driveway. Right. So I'm just trying to understand. Obviously, I push the snow and it just goes off to the sides of the driveway, right? Well, where would the runoff be located here, Alvin? I'm just well, trying to understand. Be further, be further back towards your house. Yeah, so, okay, have a okay. so you're, you're saying snow. it's somewhere on my driveway here. So Correct. is that like an extension of the driveway? Like, like it doesn't need to be paved or anything. I can just say, oh, yeah, right here you know, in, 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 in like a fake world, this is where my runoff would be. And it's a flat piece of property. Is, would that be deemed acceptable? Well, that, no, let me, Brian, let me back this up. If the town adopts a road, a, an ordinance preventing the homeowner contract of pushing snow onto a town road or a state road, my question every 300 feet is moot. Leave it up to the engineer who's 
Now, what am I going to do with the snow if I got a thousand foot driveway? Yeah, I agree. It's it's a larger problem, Alvin. Like you said, we're trying to solve it, solve it with an ordinance, not with this. Exactly. Yeah. We get an ordinance, then pff, I don't care about the every three hundred feet then. Yeah. Because the homeowner. I'll take a look at the language for Woodstock anyway. If there's something that suggests itself as easily adaptable to this project, you know, I can certainly drop it in there for people to look at provisionally. Because um, here we are, you know, saying, oh, we'll write an ordinance. Now, this commission obviously does not write ordinances. That no. is something that happens at the direction of the Board of Selectmen. So, you know, we can say, oh, yes, That's that would be that. great. But it could be, in fact, never taken up by anybody. <laughs> So that's Kira, I, I actually brought the, the there was a uh, an ad in the shopper's guide actually outlining the Woodstock ordinance and I brought it to the selectmen and that was the end of it. They never talked about it. Right. So I, I'll take a look at it. If there is something easily adaptable, I'll drop it in. And then when we, you know, have that last discussion memo, that'll be one of the highlighted areas. This was suggested as a possible solution. And you'll have something really concrete to say, this makes sense, this doesn't make sense. Fair? Right. I, I think my, my idea, again, would be moot if the town had, a, had an ordinance preventing contractor or homeowner pushing snow out onto the road. End of story. Yep, I got you. All right, let's and let the engineer here. with a thousand foot driveway determine where to put runouts. Yeah, I think we the, yeah go ahead. When I look at nine, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, I just struggle with this as a private drive or a shared drive. You know, a driveway of a homeowner is going to come in with a driveway over 500 feet for one one home and now they need a bypass area turnout for that one home. I, I can see it in, in, like I said, a shared, uh, 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 in some, some applications, yes, but on a single family home to ask the homeowner to put a turnaround, turnout, it just seems excessive. I agree with Dave on that. Well, so do I, Dave. I agree with you. But again, if the town had an ordinance, what I just said about pushing snow out on the it's a move. Let oh, no. the engineer, let the engineer the designing the thousand foot. Alvin, it, it's two separate things. I, I yeah, I understand that, but this is for for vehicles to be able to service an emergency vehicles to be able to pass on your own driveway. Yeah, the, Dave's talking about the turnout area now, Nine. Alvin. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. Yep. I, I just know. I, I struggle with that whole that whole thing. I, and I, I'm not trying to create more work where we break it now down into another subsection. I, I don't think it needs that, but I think that it needs clearer definition for what's applicable. Well, I mean, so this this top section is provisions for all driveways, uh, private or shared. And what I'm hearing is that it certainly makes sense for shared because you, you are likely to, or at least much more likely to have vehicles passing at the same time. Uh, but on a private, no. Not necessarily. So this just might need to move. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. All right, I got you. I would agree with that. Okay. All right. Anything else before I scroll down to find the next set of comments? Scrolling. I can always go back, of course. Can you go back just a little bit, Tara? I just want to see the aprons. Alvin, did you did you look at the aprons? Was there anything that stuck out there for you? Okay, which one is that now? Ten. All driveways shall be designed and constructed to prevent surface runoff from discharging to the traveled portion of public roads. Wherever possible, the runoff shall be diverted away from traveled rights of way. Driveway aprons shall be designed to prevent the discharge of runoff from public roads onto the driveway. 
or any adjacent property. Culverts, if required, shall be HDPE or RCP of a minimum of 12 inches. Somebody help me out, HDPE, RCP? I have no problem with that. that line. High density, I'm, poly, poly. And then that, concrete. Okay. Force concrete. Um, I, you know, I know that, and it maybe is somewhere else, but I know that, you know, all the aprons have to be asphalted and, you know, it's almost, as much as I hate to say it, but it's almost like a DPW function where it's, and I think there is somewhere where it's, it has to be inspected or, you know, to make sure that it adheres to the runoff for the public roads and, and you know, that, that it is correct. I mean, it doesn't say anything about right. asphalt in that. I mean, it just says that it's got to be, the apron has to be constructed and designed and it doesn't say anything about asphalt. And I know that that is somewhere in the, it's, I don't know if it's in these regs, or, but I know it, it, it any I driveway saw it. Apron has to be asphalt. I saw it too. And I saw it, I want to say I read it today and I was reading these. So the question is, where do I see? So let me drop a note. Drop a note. I've got the uh, I got the new driveway ordinance right in front of me. Yeah, but I think it's in this document somewhere too. Go ahead though, Alvin. I'll just read it quickly. It's four point four point eight. Driveway shall be designed to prevent stormwater flow from entering a town street and wherever possible the town right of way. Privately owned and maintained drainage diversion swales, detention areas, and or dry wells shall be utilized to the greatest possible extent. Culvers with a minimum diameter of 15 inches shall be used when crossing town drainage ways. Whenever a private swale or private detention area is utilized in diverting driveway water from the town right away, the of the subject lots shall be responsible for maintaining the swale or detention area and any culverts in accordance with the approved design. I'll tell you what, they didn't do that on Madison Avenue because that gets pretty nasty over there on 193. Slightly. <laughs> so it might be, you know, maybe I'm getting confused. Maybe it's in the building permit as part of the occupancy, Alvin, does that sound familiar? Where as part of the occupancy part, of, you have to have the apron paved? No, that's um, the, the a paved apron now on any driveway new uh, has to be, you got to go in 10 feet. Yeah. With, with uh, asphalt. And the rest it, of it, it can be gravel. It should really say it here then. It should be detailed here. I, I am yes. so sure that it is somewhere in the subdivision regulations because I was not looking at the driveway ordinance today and yeah. I saw that language and I am racking my brains and I can't remember which section I was reading. As long as uh, it's covered under private drives, Tara, you know, private driveways, shared driveways, subdivisions, it, it just needs to be everywhere. Yep. Okay. Uh, you know, just let me read something. 4.7 in the driveway is the new one. A paved apron oh. extending from the street edge at least 10 feet in length and 15 feet in width is required. Okay. There 10 by 15. So paved also, apron. also, Tira, do you, so the Alvin just read the minimum was 15 inches for, for a culvert pipe. Correct. So, and we have 12 listed here. Yep. Yeah, it, we, that, that's why I'm bringing this up. I mean, it should be 15 uh, inches. Right? So driveway <laughs> ordinance. 4.8 mentions 15 inches. That's uh, section four standards 4.8. Instead of the, saying 12 inches, we could just say, refer to section four standards 4.8. Okay. Don't we just want driveway to add the road. word paved driveway aprons? Just, could we just paved do that? Paved apron. 
in front of the word driveway. Yeah. Yep. Moving on, or we have more here? If, if you list it like that, though, doesn't it leave it open to, it can be paved if, you know, if it's paved, it has to be designed to prevent discharge. What if I just want to leave it dirt? Or it, it refers back to the ordinance. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. You have to pave it, right? Yeah. You, it's you, have, to, you yeah. have to pave the apron. You don't have to pave the rest of your driveway. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make an, a note here about number nine again with the shared driveways. Yep. I mean, if if we're saying that you got to reasonably be have a width for passing a standing vehicle for emergency, I mean, what how wide is that road going to be? That driveway, that shared driveway. I mean, what's minimum? Twelve feet. That thing's going to be twenty four feet wide. Hey Janet, can you have any input there because? Uh, uh, I don't I, have. I believe the shared driveway that you have you have is sixteen feet wide. If you have a shared driveway, so it's eight feet is is considered passable. So eight feet and eight feet. No. Her. Yes. Well, I mean that's would work for vehicles going like two miles yeah. an hour. So yes, you yeah, could sure. pass at a very slow pace. Yeah. Delivery vehicle or somebody coming in and out. That's like a, a very minimum. Yeah. And it is a driveway. So you should, in fact, be going at a minimum speed. <laughs> right. <laughs> One would hope. Right. Uh, and, and but you know how I feel about shared is, driveways. Typically, there is a little bit of a shoulder, even if it's only one or two feet. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So what did, what did you just say that requirement generally is 16 feet? Yes, I, I believe you have that further on in your section two. No, the the next page the next page over. C mentions uh, the width for a shared yes. portion of the driveway shall be a minimum of sixteen feet in width. Okay, so we just haven't seen it yet in this okay in very this good. review. Okay. okay, very good, thank you. But before okay. we move on, sorry, I do want to I um I agree with what Dave said about in ten that I can we can we word it driveway apron aprons shall be paved and designed to because it does seem like paved is a qualifier not a requirement that is true uh so driveway aprons shall be paved and that's fine yep that's good what else did you say though Joe and then just continue on designed to prevent blah, 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 blah. Oh, okay to the blah, blah, blah. yeah Gotcha. 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 Tira, too, I think a lot of reference to driveways. We should make a point somewhere to look at the town's ordinance for driveways. Like we yeah. get 12 inches here and 15 in the driveway ordinance. Do comparison for consistency to driveway ordinance throughout. Got it. Anything sure, else on this? Making... Yeah. Anything else on this page, guys? I is it all right um, if I just share one overall comment for driveways? Please do. That's why we asked you in. Um, I I think there is further on in the shared driveways a statement that says all shared driveways with access slopes of ten percent or greater shall be paved to a minimum width of six, a minimum, let's just say, shall be paved with bituminous concrete or an equivalent material. I, I think that should be true for all driveways. Any driveway that's greater than 10% should be paved. Otherwise, it, it, it's a continuous erosion problem. Okay, so this is letter E, and you're saying that this, just like we moved something, we're gonna move something down from the, from the all into the just shared, that this should actually be a condition for all. That that would be my suggestion, and that would that's what most other towns have. Gotcha. Where's that? Where are we? Kit Killingly has it. Plainfield has it. You know, I'm not 100% sure of Woodstock. 
but driveways in excess of 10% are required to be paved because of erosion problems and heavy rainstorms. Yeah, and I think that that erosion risk makes is sense to me. Can I think? Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. But to, to me, it, I, I don't like paved driveways. I'm just, especially on a slope. When the hell all that water goes? Oof. And a lot of it can be corrected with, uh, I mean, you buy these uh, uh, poly plastic, if you will, four inch up to six inch gutters. You can actually put in a, uh, uh, a driveway to take the water and just prevent it from cascading down in a, uh, a gravel driveway. The slope on a Todd driveway too, when you you don't have no control going down that with a pickup truck with a plow on it. Um, exactly. At least gravel, you've got something, if, even even yep. with ice, if it's broken up, you've got some kind of traction. I plow a couple driveways on Fabian Road that are tarred are going up them hills and I'd much rather do them if they were gravel. Yep. Water can be as there are, and there are systems out there to prevent serious water erosion in, in uh, gravel driveways. So let me ask you that, you know, from the LID perspective, Janet, um, although I don't think we can require unpaved driveways or paved driveways generally, from an LID perspective, is an unpaved graveled driveway preferable? because of the permeability? Um, yes, in most circumstances. So the exception is very steep driveways because of the sediment transport. I mean, we, we, we've all seen it in a heavy rain, you drive past the toe of a gravel driveway and all the gravel was spilled out. Well, where does that go? Into the catch basins, into the culverts, into the rivers and streams, so. So related to that, although, I think we cannot require uh, either unpaved or paved to be part of the design. Do we express a preference in this section? Because we can, we can express a preference. But, but that doesn't really hold any power because it's just at the time of the subdivision. Once an individual property owner owns a lot, they're gonna do whatever they want with their driveway for surface treatment. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll leave it lie. Um, although I have some thoughts on language about preference, which if we have enough time, I, I want to get to at the end, but uh, any, anything else on these items 11 through 14 under the provisions for private or shared driveways? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I have, do have a question though, Tara. Why would single driveways and be put in with the uh, um, subdivision regulations? Why would single driveways be put into the subdivision regulations? Correct. Subdivision well, because, more than one house. Right, but a developer, and I think probably most subdivisions that have been in Thompson to date, um, have involved roads which lead to individual driveways. So previously, we haven't really had, uh, well, previously, uh, it's been stated in these regulations that shared drives were prohibited, creating all that extra curb cuts and pavement. So, so this is sort of, this is new territory for Thompson saying, here are conditions for shared driveways. And like I say, it's, it's, it's new material for Thompson. So we wanna make sure we get it right. But certainly there are also circumstances in which a developer is gonna propose a number of lots that have individual private driveways leading to them. That's what, okay. that's what they all are now. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that the question you were asking? Yeah, yep, yep, okay. Yep, okay. Okay. All right. I Go ahead. One one more comment is on number 12. 
about driveway side slopes in a cut or fill section shall not exceed three to one. Um, tip, typically two to one, which would be like 2H, two horizontal colon one B is appropriate for sloping of driveways and road embankments. It's CONDOT standard and, you know, your cuts and fills will just have a smaller footprint on the land. Okay, thank you, Janet. Okay. Um, Oh, I see a reference to cul-de-sacs. Dave, do you, are you sharpening your knives? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for you. <laughs> for for uh, Ray and Jane, who are new to this, Dave and I have been teasing each other about, you know, our fight to the death over cul-de-sacs, which is inevitable. <laughs> so um, all right, so let's see what this actually is. Where cul-de-sacs are proposed as town roads, there shall be no driveways to interior lots on the turnaround portion. Marla's comment here requires further dis... Oh no, that's her carrying my comment over actually. Requires further discussion. Rich and I agree that the town doesn't want to accept cul-de-sacs as public roads, only as private roads or shared drives. Some commissioners feel differently. We can't publish these regs without coming to a consensus everyone can accept. Now, I don't know that we have to talk about that whole concept under this item, um, but what is the logic here? And my, my recollection is that this is something I carried over from the existing subdivision regulations with the no driveways to interior lots on the turnaround portion. Um, so I can't say that I had an overarching logic for the item itself. My logic was in the um, stipulation for when they are proposed as town roads. Uh, because if, we're, if we do ultimately agree that they should not be publicly accepted, this doesn't really, uh, the language would have to at least change drastically. Um, if not get eliminated altogether. So I, I open the floor to comment. So I, I have a question on, on this. McCullough Sachs proposed as town roads, there should be no driveways to interior lots in the turnaround portion. Now Calder Sachs have entrance, entrances into the driveway to the house, right? Am I, am I right or wrong? Calder Sachs have, en well, According to this, no, they don't. Well, uh, and like I and like I say, that's that I'm pretty sure is a carryover from uh, a mild adaptation from the current language. I will say that on a number of the cul-de-sacs that we've looked at, when people have come in, it does seem that where the open space has been set aside, it's been set aside in the bulb, uh, possibly because of this stipulation in the previous edition or the current edition. Um, so I cannot say that I am totally clear on what the logic is of that. All right. So, so, so but Madison Ave has cul-de-sacs and there's driveways coming off the cul-de-sacs. So what is the difference between a driveway, the house is right there, and then a driveway for an interior lot? That's my question. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was my question too, Cindy. So I was trying to think through it. Is it the concern about then the number of driveways in that area? Yeah, I, I'm not getting that. Um, of course, we're allowing only five shared driveways, so. I... We are proposing no more than five units can share a driveway, that is correct. But a cul-de-sac wouldn't be considered a driveway, would it? Well, you could propose a shared driveway that took the form of a cul-de-sac if it served five lots or fewer. I don't, I don't know where this 
I mean, this cul-de-sacs around town, like Cindy said, that this doesn't even apply. So at, at all the cul-de-sacs I've been on have driveways in the turn, turnaround portion. But it's to the yeah. interior lots, right? I'm talk, yeah, I'm talking. So what is the difference between having a driveway for an interior lot on that cul-de-sac cul as opposed to having the driveway go right into the house that's, you know, uh, right on the, the cul-de-sac? Well, and then that was, and so yeah, that was, yeah, my, my, I'm surmising that it has to do with increasing the number of driveways on that portion. Maybe. Yeah. But like I say, since it's a carryover, I can't tell you what the reasoning was. Any thoughts there, Janet, on, on, what this might what this might have been seeking to avoid uh, i think that a lot of it is potentially like what what joe said like where's the public's work department going to put snow if there's just like driveway 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 um and, and the other thing is just like the like the look of the land like if you if you have the cul-de-sac and then you look ahead and there's yeah, yeah, it would just it would just bunch the driveways up because usually you will, are allowed reduced frontage, even though it's a frontage lot because you take your frontage at the um, building setback line and not at the actual pavement. So you already have reduced frontage, even if you're not an interior lot. So how do people feel about this provision or stipulation? this stipulation. Does the logic of reducing the number of driveways configured on the bulb hold up? And this is assuming that it's a town accepted road that the town is plowing now. Um, Uh, normally, um, if, as I said, that turnaround portion is, if it is a town road, that's where the town plow drivers put the But you're, in, you're, in, you know, discouraging public roads. So if that is so, I think we were mentioned before that perhaps private, um, you know, the five driveways or shared driveways, they could end up in a cul-de-sac. Um, again, what's the difference? Except right, so again, it said, like, uh, you know, accumulation of driveways, but, but they also need the ones in front need that 150 foot frontage. So let me just see if this makes this makes more sense. And this is assuming that we keep this provision or stipulation. Where yeah, called us. Go ahead. If somebody buys, you know, there's a subdivision and there's a big piece of property on where the on the, the bulb. And, you know, if they buy a piece that's 10 acres that's on the end of that bulb. And they want to put a house in the middle. They should be able to put a, you know, uh, driveway out to where they want to put their house on the on the interior. In my opinion, anyway. They shouldn't have to build right on on the bulb if they if they bought a big enough piece of property. Right. Hmm. <clears throat> But it's not a it's not preventing a long driveway. It's preventing a driveway to an interior lot, meaning a lot stacked behind somebody else's. So let's say that you had right a, a, yeah, five, a a five acre property that happened to front onto the bulb. You could still have your driveway. It doesn't matter how long you make it, but nobody else can put a driveway adjacent to yours that goes behind your lot if they're on that. And that would be the clustering of drives. I, I, I think whoever suggested it might be onto something as to what it is that they're trying to avoid here. 
So it's not saying no driveways on the turnaround portion, it's saying no driveways to flag lots. Right, but you only need 50 feet for, uh, for flag lot frontage. Right, so that would be the, that would be the crowding aspect. Hmm. Right, if everybody else needs 100 feet, and you've got to space the, the lot frontage lines out a minimum of 100 feet, except for, you know, somebody wants to put a flag lot in, and now you've got the 50 feet foot strip, that's the clustering. I, I think the logic that somebody suggested is probably the logic that controlled this. So then the question is, do you accept that logic or do you reject that logic? Because you could have a shared driveway, driveway with somebody that goes in a little bit and then they could give a right away to somebody behind. So, you know, that, that turn their driveway into a shared driveway. Right. One, six, 300. I, I think that just hit the nail on the head because this, this would prevent you from having one house on an interior lot, but under your new uh, section of shared driveways, houses on shared driveways are never considered interior. So if this provision is in you, you couldn't have one house, but you could have five houses. You lost me, Janet. <laughs> it, it, it says lots that have access to a shared driveway are not interior lots, correct? Right, right, right. So which is why we wanted to limit to five so that right. it doesn't so go if, on endlessly. So if you have a 50 foot strip and it goes to an interior lot, that's not allowed. But if you have a 50 foot strip in which there's a shared driveway that goes to five lots, that is allowed. Whoa. So you could put a 50 foot, you could put five more houses in that interior lot on that shared driveway. Theoretically. That's correct because they're not defined as interior. Correct. Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to point out. Okay. I think we have a certain percentage too. You, not every shared uh, driveway would say five lots on it. Maybe only one of those five can have or maybe two can have a sh you know a shared driveway on that. Okay, cone. so is so is the simple solution to this, and maybe I'm oversimplifying, uh, just that there be sh there shall be no more than X number of driveways, regardless of whether they're interior lots or not, on the turnaround. On the cul-de-sac. Yeah, on the bulb. Yeah. Well, you you don't have maximum dimensions of your bulb or minimum. So, I mean, you might have minimum, but not maximum. So somebody could propose a large bulb to get more frontage. And then if you, so you, so you can't have a fixed number of driveways. Gotcha. So I'm just going to drop this here. So what did you say again, Janet? I'm sorry. I didn't understand what you just said. If, if you have a cul-de-sac, um, that's 100 feet in diameter, then you have a certain amount of driveways. Well, what if your cul-de-sac is 150 feet in diameter? Shouldn't you be allowed to have more driveways because you have a bigger cul-de-sac? That you don't have any regulations saying that there's a maximum cul-de-sac. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> setting. Oh, wow. Min. Couldn't we couldn't we solve this if, if it's, the snow is the issue, as it seems the snow and plowing is the issue? Can't we require a snow storage area or something that they design in? Think of my runouts now, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Pull back the Alvin. Yeah, per, yeah per, perhaps a runout. <laughs> Alvin, I didn't hear what Alvin said. I want to laugh. What'd you say, Alvin? I'm I, just saying now we're talking about runouts. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Deja vu. You know, there's one more thing. We're all looking at this. We think driveway is the linear, but early in tonight's program, Tira showed us these wonderful cul-de-sacs or, or whatever with different shapes. It don't have, it doesn't have to be linear. It doesn't have to be straight. In other words, it could be curved. And what Janet and his suggestion doesn't have to be a, a perfect circle at the end. It could be oblong. 
I mean, it, we ought to let contractors and designers design their own shapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Janet, is there, I, you referenced, I, I didn't quite catch it. Is there a minimum in the regs that you recommended? Oh. I, I can't recall seeing it today, but there, there is, I believe there is one. It's just because it, you need to be able to turn around a school bus, a fire truck without having doing three point turns. Yeah. So that that's why they end up being pretty big. You're not you're supposed to be able to go all the way around it. I think it's a hundred feet diameter. So is oh you made a comment. Is was it was your comment maximum? We have a maximum or we don't have a maximum? No, you have a minimum pro, most likely okay. you have a minimum. Okay. Yeah, then that's to Alvin's point is, you know, let them design what they're going to design and not, that, that's why I got nervous about the maximum. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest a maximum. No, no. Okay, I actually thought you were suggesting setting a maximum. Okay. Uh, so we are back to the idea of snow storage areas. Does that mean we think that this needs to be struck or modified, this letter G? I, it just seemed like we were trying to solve it for snow. That, that's why it's here is for snow, right? It seems to be. Yeah. As long as we're in New England, it's snow. <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm, so we're okay, like Janet said, that if there's a cul-de-sac, someone can create a shared driveway off that cul-de-sac and have five houses on it. We're okay with that. I mean, if you, yeah, I think that's right, overcrowding, you, but hey, man. You think it's my friend? I think it's overcrowding. I, 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 I just, I'm not in favor of that. I feel, I feel like we're, we're creating house I, stacking. Maybe, on a cul-de-sac maybe it's because i just don't know enough about this um i'm just confused you you talk about the shared driveway but you still need 150 foot frontage for these houses is that is that correct yeah you you would have the 150 foot and i believe and janet could correct me if i'm wrong here you have 150 foot you have 50 foot swath for the driveway and you start with house number one. And then you somebody have says- 50, Back up a minute. So the entrance to that shared driveway is 50 feet. Correct. Okay. And now someone says, okay, well, I want to make it a shared driveway. And then they extend that driveway because they're going to create another house behind that one. Does anybody have access to Audette's uh, proposal from this past Monday? Because I think he did have- shared drives off his uh um, yeah yes, give me a did. second yeah yeah because i think it, there's nothing like seeing a good example of somebody who's actually tried to do something right let me know when you found yeah. it joe and i'll and, and we'll switch screens and, and got, several months ago i think i sent you a sample that showed a whole bunch of crazy flag lots that i did in cad you know, I kind of like test drove the regulations. Yeah, yeah, you did. And and that obviously created a situation that we don't want, but certainly the provisions as we've described them has the skeleton of our intent, uh, or at least the skeleton of, of what we've proposed as our intent. Um, but we don't want to have unintended consequences, right? So I almost feel like you and I should sit down, Janet, and say, you know, which of this is is crazy pants, and which which of this is is reasonable in terms of that diagram that you created. Like, yeah. it, it, at which point is become too much, and how do we how do we rein that in? Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. It basically, whatever you come up with, you need to like test drive it with like a yep. real design and look for unintended consequences and have the mindset of a developer who wants to get every lot possible and right. see what see what you get and see if you, that's what your intent is. Do you find that yet, Joe? Yeah, I was just about to jump in and say I'm ready to go. You should be able, I think I have it set up to share already for you, yep.
Are you seeing, is this what you were talking about? Yeah. 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 Can you zoom on that? Maybe flip it, uh, flip it horizontally and zoom up. Um, I can zoom. I'm not sure I can. Is that the one up near the uh, golf golf yeah, course? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the one you yeah. guys saw on Monday on night. Monday, but, yeah. But that's not but, a proposed subdivision. No, but it, it, if he could have proposed it as a subdivision, and there are shared drives in it, so it, we can still use it for discussion purposes. So pull it is down it, to where the bulb is. Yeah. So this is where it comes off County Home Road <laughs> Twenty One. Um, it goes by the first couple and then there's the bulb with one two three four five six seven yeah so that that makes sense to me with shared driveways so it kind of goes back to one of our previous meetings because we said that you couldn't have uh what was the word rear uh i, I want to say a stacking or a house in the rear of the property, right? So this this form of shared driveway makes sense to me. I just want to make sure that we're saying it, you know, verbalizing it properly in our regulations that gives a visual such as this. So I'm not, um, I'm not so sure that we're there yet. Yeah, so let me go back to the text. Uh, Joe, you want to? Thank you. So how about that word, this? Re, the rear, the rear word came up before in our one of our previous meetings that I was wondering. Yeah, that let's looks like. Try this. But Brian, like, so when Joe had that pulled up between nine and ten, let's say there was fifty feet, and they were able to get three or four more lots. That's what you're saying that we don't want to do, but. Well, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if going with, with Joe's little diagram there is, can they continue that shared driveway and create say two more houses left and right? Or is that considered the rear of the existing property? And, and it, it disqualifies you from doing that. Am I making sense? I don't. I don't yeah. know if I am. I'm just thinking that they'd have to come in with that because then it would be a subdivision, right, off of that. Well, I, I think that. No, was, not if it's a part of the initial no, subdivision. No, no, yeah. if it's a part I, of the initial, yes. I don't know because now you said it's just like going back to what Janet said. I've I've created a shared driveway now. So according to that regulation, I'm allowed to create five or fewer homes on that shared driveway. Regardless, right? It's, I'm now creating a shared driveway. So I, I don't know. I'm just, that's the way I'm thinking about it. I, I could be dead wrong. Um, but so, I also, I also know, Jen. Am I, am I reading? Am I hearing you properly? The way you read that says Town Road. If I create a shared driveway, you're now allowing five homes to be built on that. That's I, what you said I, earlier, right? I believe so. I believe it says down in that shared driveway section that lots off a shared driveway are not considered interior. Yeah, they're not interior. Yeah. Yeah. So I would agree. But the example that was showed there was clearly not a subdivision and, and it would need a lot of work to make it be a subdivision because of the way it was set out. I mean, you can. Yeah. Brian, you need a white one and a black pen. You can. I know. I know. Draw, draw it and put it right in front of your screen so we see what you're trying to say. Well, it's not I'll easy. Try, I'll try to visual here. I'll give you like, all right. So I have a driveway and I create a house, but this driveway is a shared driveway. Yeah. So if I extend that shared driveway up and I build another home right here, is that in the rear of that home? Because that was the previous ver verbiage that we had. You're yeah. not allowed yeah, you're to right. create a new home in the rear of the property. So is that disqualified me from doing well, that? 
well, it's only interior lots that can't be in the rear. So since those aren't interior lots, the rear thing isn't applicable. Say that one more time, I'm sorry. The, the, the language about there shall be no in, in the interior lots, it's one interior lot shall not be to the rear of another interior lot. But those are not interior lots, so the rear is not applicable. Yeah, so that's what confused me. So I have a flag lot, I, it, like my house. Means, I think, I, I, Janet, I think what you're saying, what I just understood you to say, okay, you have that road, you've got the, what, what Brian just showed, you have the driveway, you build a house, the driveway's a little bit longer, you build another house. That's not the interior. If you were to build in back of that house, that would be the interior. Is that correct? Is that what you were saying? I don't, I, not on the driveway, but literally in back of those houses. Is that the interior? I'm just trying to understand it. Well, the definition typically of an interior lot is that it doesn't have 150 feet of frontage. It Correct. has so less frontage. Feet. It only yeah. has 50 feet of frontage. Yep. And and, and, sharing and, there's a one, and there's one lot. But if you have shared driveways and they're not considered interior, then you could have five lots because they do have frontage. Their frontage is measured along the shared driveway. Along so the shared driveway. So you cannot. Comes off. Yeah, you can't build in back of those houses that are sharing the that driveway. Right. I'm okay, going to zip up to I'm going to zip up to the thousand. section on interior lots for one section uh, for yeah. one second. Uh, you guys keep talking. I just want to let you know and, what I'm doing. I I, 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 we, I think we need another picture. I yeah, mean, we, I'm we looking need at visual. We need visual yeah, graphics. Yeah, on I'm okay. a visual. Yeah. I'm visual also. Brian, the, Brian, the way that this is, the way that that is, it's like if you wanted to add on to your driveway and put five houses in back of your house, they wouldn't be interior lots because they would have a, their frontage yeah, off, of, yeah. off the driveway. Got off it. the drive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, understand, I understand that. I, I, I got I got all that. I, okay. I, I'm, I am not in favor of that. <laughs> but um, this is my vote. All right. I... It doesn't have to be linear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is what I was looking for. Because I think maybe if we just modify this item one under interior lots, and I'm going to be thinking this out loud, so I may backtrack on myself a couple of times. Interior lots, also known as flag lots, shall have the same minimum lot size required in the underlying district and shall meet all other requirements of the paragraphs above. The access right of way shall not be included in the calculation of the lot size for an interior lot. For the purposes of these regulations, five lots or fewer arranged along a shared driveway shall not be considered okay. interior lots. However, no additional lots shall be permitted to stack behind the initial five lots. And that probably would need to be monkeyed with, but does that, that, make, that, does that solve the logical problem? Yeah, that makes sense to me, but it makes it much clearer. I'm I'm looking to find the visual a visual to forward you guys when I did that sample. The you know, the the crazy quilt one. Yeah, the crazy ones. Right, because we don't want that. We know we don't want that. So so, so okay. my question is logically, does this new provision for the purposes of these regulations, five lots or fewer arranged along a shared driveway shall not be considered interior lots. However no additional lots shall be permitted to stack behind the initial five lots. Does that solve the sure. logical problem? That, that makes it clear to me, but you know, and now it's much clearer. Yeah, I'm in agreement it's clear. Can't say that I'm in support of that, but yeah, it makes it clear. Well, they won't be able to stack behind and, yep. and that's what we don't want, I guess. 
Yeah. Right. Well, you, well, the other thing is you basically you can't have a shared driveway off a shared driveway. Yeah. Very, yeah. That states it even better, Janet. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's really good, Janet. And did we already address that in that section? I'm scrolling back. Where's down that now, word so. rear? Where's that word rear? Because we had that somewhere unless we removed it. Yeah, it, it was just there. Yeah. We might have removed rear because we were referring to the same thing in three different ways. Yeah. So we might we might have taken it out. I I, I don't remember for certain. Yeah, neither do I. Um, but that is ringing a bit of a bell. Yeah, I just saw it in there when when you had the interior section up. Oh well, I'll go back up. I really need to get a mouse for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering what was going on there. <laughs> it's it's because I don't have a mouse and yeah, I've got to use the little arrows and. Oh, I'll ship you. I'll give you a mouse. mouse. I, I just need to. Them. I just need to get one. It's not like they're hard to come by. Uh, when, when's okay. your birthday, Ray? We'll ch we'll check. Okay, right there, D. Right there. Go go uh, go up. Go yeah. up a little. Oh, yeah. Two D. There we go. No interior lot shall be to the rear of another interior lot but we're not considering. So that allows for both the fact that we're saying that these lot, the lots shall share the driveways. They're not considered interior lots, yeah. okay, but fine. you can't stack behind those then no, again. Fine. All right, I'm okay with that. Okay. What's your gut feeling, Janet? Does that solve the logical dilemma? Well, and as long as it says under shared driveways that you can't have a shared driveway off a shared driveway. You, you All right, may so let's- you may we might already, already have. have that. Yeah, you may already have that. I feel like we do, but we're going to go down and find out. We're all going to get older while I scroll. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I know our, our the days of our lives are precious. <laughs> I have two extra spare mouses. I'm looking at them right now. I'm going to drop them <laughs> off to you tomorrow. <laughs> How embarrassing is that? Yeah, I know. And I just... I never think of it except when we're here and I'm going, hey, I got a scroll of it. So stupid. Okay. Let us see if we have already. Oh, oh, and let's look at this. Where cul-de-sacs are proposed as town roads, no more than three lots shall be served by any single driveway, um, which I was looking at that thing that Audette proposed and he had two split off. I could envision a third one behind that without it being too disruptive in that configuration. Um, so I'm just tossing that out there uh, while I'm looking for. Serve up to five to ten minutes in the middle. Shared portion of the driveway. There shall be at least. Blah, blah, blah. It looks like we do not have a stipulation that no shared drive can come off another shared drive. So let's add yeah, that. I, I didn't think it didn't sound familiar to me. Okay. So I'm glad it came up. Yep. So let's see, where does it make sense to put that? I think it makes sense to put it here. No shared driveway shall be constructed connecting to another shared way. Is it that simple? I, I think it may be. Okay, good. <laughs> good. All right, so now let's go back up to where cul-de-sacs are proposed as town roads, no more than three lots shall be served by any single driveway on the turnaround portion. Does that seem reasonable or desirable? That seems reasonable. That's a, thinking about most of the ones in town. That's about the way they're all set up. Anybody else? Thoughts? So it seems reasonable. It also seems to me 
that it would have the exact opposite effect of the original language that we're looking at. And why do you say that? Because it seemed, again, this was my hypothesis, that the intent was to minimize the number of driveways, whereas this could increase the number of driveways. Gotcha. I need to I need to mull this a little more. So let's just move on just so we can come back to it with fresh eyes, maybe, or maybe I can look at it tomorrow when it's daylight hours. Uh, okay, here we have, and now this is these are the provisions for shared drives that we're moving into for the time being. All shared driveways with access slopes of 10% or greater shall be paved to a minimum width. Okay, so we've already addressed that. Janet said that that should go up to the section for general driveway provisions. Uh, there is some typos though in that typical cross section. It's a little bit odd, the pavement cross section. Um, pavements have three structures, like from the bottom up, you have your sub base, then on top of that, you have your base. Then on top of that, you have your wearing surface. So the so in this analysis here, so the three inches is the wearing surface. So underneath that, you would probably have number two should probably be four inches of processed gravel base. So uh, let's let's go let's go point by point. Okay. Six six inches of bank run gravel, or as required by the director of public yeah. works. Are you saying that one's okay? Probably, but I would say sub base, bank run gravel sub base, because that's the most bottom. Okay. Uh, that's the coarsest material with the largest stone. And, and it's not usually written with a hyphen, it's usually just written as one. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that looks horrible. Welcome to construction. <laughs> so, some sub, and, submarine and, and, on dry and, land yeah and <laughs> actually six inches is pretty low i mean you could check with some as i would go, go with eight inches of that and, and you can check with some other engineers or rich or somebody well we can't check with rich anymore okay tomorrow at noon i believe is his last moment with us Really? Okay. Yes, sir. No. Huh. Okay. So, so item item two. Item two should probably be four inches of processed gravel base. Compacted. <laughs> oh, you're getting you're getting you're asking for a little too much now, Alvin. <laughs> Can you take know, a little density know. test on that too, pal, or what? <laughs> two, two inches is too small. You couldn't even grade it. I mean, the size stone no. is like How an do you inch spread or an two inch inches. and a half. Yeah, you can't compact or grade uh, two inch Even cores. four inches is good. So, so it, it is compacted actually what we, want, what we want to say here as opposed to on a firm road bed. I do like a firm mattress, but. You can no, say no, one. No, no one's compact, compacting the, that. Well, the no compaction, one. if you want you to really say get firm, into. You could say firm or compact or, or compacted road bed. Mechanically road bed, compacted. I mean, I mean yeah, because technically it should be compacted to 95% of yeah. the optimum density. So I don't know how technical you want to get. Yeah, well, we want to be as accurate as possible. I mean, well, I want to deal with reality. It's not like I build shared driveways every single day in my life. Is somebody really bringing a roller over there and compacting that? I mean, are we asking for something that's... Yeah. I, that I think, yes. This is this is a 16 foot wide shared driveway. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. 
And so, some of the okay. some of the new rollers, Brian, you probably know, have an automatic compacting drum on it. So when going down these roads, yeah. they compact it as they that's totally roll. fine. I get, I don't like I said, I, I'm not a person that builds shared driveway, so I don't I don't know, right? <laughs> so all right, so that's let that's uh, Roman numeral two. What's next, Janet? The the number three is correct. Okay. And is that it? Yes, that's your okay. three levels. You start off with your sub base, then you put the, and you compact that, then you put the base, which is finer gravel, and then you pave on top of that. So this right here, if you have eight inches and four inches, so you have 12 inches of solid good gravel before you put your pavement on. Okay. And, okay. and for roads, it's even thicker, but for a shared driveway, I, I think that seems reasonable. Okay, I wanna say that I took, that I stole all this straight from Killingly. So it's not like I was basing it on my, per my yeah. personal it, knowledge. It, then the two was definitely a typo for sure. Okay. Uh, all right, so that item now looks okay. On the three inches, should that be concrete or uh, hard top or asphalt? I, I think you you give them a choice. You have bituminous concrete or an equivalent material. So somebody could put in concrete, somebody could in, put in potentially pavers, some kind of low impact development, you know, mm -hmm. pervious concrete. Um, or even three quarter broken stone with stone dust. Yeah, I like I like equivalent material. I think that's enough option. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so I I mean I can put examples. No, don't don't bother with that. That's, that's okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. Uh, anybody have any other comments here? We've added uh, the stipulation: no shared driveway shall be constructed connecting to another shared driveway. Uh, Janet, does the 16 foot width make sense with the 50 foot access strip? To me, it does. Okay, I just, I can't picture it practically. So I just <laughs> refer to you because you know. Well, I think 16 feet gives you room for like underground utilities on one side, gives you room for some drainage swales, some grading. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I, I, yeah, I get that, but I'm talking about the G with the minimum width of 50 feet for an access strip. I'm assuming the access strip is the, the approach, the entrance, like, the entrance to it, no, right? No, the access strip is the width. It's like the right of way. It's a, the equivalent of a road right of way. Oh, I totally misread that then. Let me Seems see. Wide. Well, but because you so always needed the 50 foot of frontage, even if you only have a 10 foot driveway to an interior lot, you still need 50 feet wide. Yeah. So we're good with that as is. We're amending. We're, we're, no, well, Janet, do you feel we should specify what the what the approach is then for the access into the shared drive? What, or just what leave it up mean, to them to design it. What do you mean by approach? Off a of main road. Yeah, so if it's 16 foot pavement, do we want to make them uh, 16, 16 feet, right, of traveled, traveled road base? Do we want to splay that out at the at the road where it where it intersects with the public road yeah. and have yeah. that? So, do we want to specify that as being wider in these regs, or just let them design that? Yeah, you know, should it be a 30? 
Yeah, it could be, you could specify it that it be 30 feet where it meets the public road and taper in, or just let the engineers design it. I mean, everybody is gonna flare it out with radiuses so the trucks can turn in. Yeah. Um, but you could specify 30 feet. I, I think we want to tear in this, and, and I, I'll leave it up to the other commissioners, but I think that if we're going into this detail, I think that we specify what we want and we make it a minimum of 30, 30 foot approach or just my opinion. So so help me out with, with the actual thing we want to say. What What is the sentence? That, that the, um, paved the paved apron be 30 feet wide at the road, something like that. Yeah. So we're actually, so it's not actually amending G, it's, adding that the apron shall be 30 feet wide where it connects to the road. Yes. Okay. That's my uh, vote. Uh, Would that be flared, Dave? Yes. And it still gives, so Janet, my rationale, it gives them still 20 feet for utilities to be off that pavement, you know, say 10 feet on each side, however they want to do it, but it, it's still, it's not impervious the whole way and still gives access to uh, conduits or, you know, what have you. Right, and the conduits can be under the pavement anyhow, so. Yeah. Okay, so I'll add that underneath probably. All right, so we've got, it's 8.52, so we won't, well, I suppose we can take a quick look. There are no comments on monuments and there's no comments on special structures. And there's one little comment on um, the difference between private roads and private ways that Marla raises, uh, which I, I have to let you guys know, I added into the definitions after, this is why I like to have the definitions at the end because you discover things as you go. Um, after Marla raised this point, I went into the definitions after we had already discussed them and added separate definitions for private roads and private ways because she's exactly right. Um, they are related but different. Um, her real comment here was that previously that had said private ways, I believe, and I corrected it to private roads, but I'm still suggesting that the street sign would say that it is a private way. That one, I, I mean, we can call it a private way or a private road. The point is that we're clearly labeling that the town doesn't own it. It's owned by the people who live on it. Uh, so the, so tier on that, my only comment is the town still approves the the naming convention of those private roads, right? Somewhere. You know, it doesn't actually make that crystal clear, but that's a good additional comment. So let me add under here. And I don't know, I know it says it, I'm not sh quite sure of the wording, but I thought it had to be approved by the DPW or the selectmen or someone, someone had I, to approve the name. Yeah, and I think that's in the appendices um, under street okay. design standards. I'll, I'll double check, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that is in there. Uh, street standards approved in Yeah, because it's obviously not here. All right, and... I think we looked at the street trees stuff pretty well, but you know what, let's leave street trees for next time because that actually relates directly to sidewalks and that's another big topic and we're at six minutes of. So let's call it, uh, we're gonna pick up at article four, section two Q street trees uh, and go from there. And that's our Monday meeting, seven to 9 p.m.
as always. You guys have done good work. Yeah, thanks everyone uh, very much. So I just wanted to toss this one, one thought point out before we go, because um, it's outside the linear text and Dave and I were talking about this very briefly uh, as we were leaving on Monday. You know, I was thinking about the the order in which the document describes the design standards. And I was partly inspired by all that reading that I did on Friday on the snow day and that I sent those links along to in terms of uh, and even that that first one that we had the screenshot of, they talk about the, let me pull it back up. Um, the order of design, right? Yes, I like those. Right, and I like this too, uh, but the way, and he, he refers to it in here, the author, that most subdivision regulations sort of talk about streets first and uh, boundary lines first, and then they get to, and we do this too, our stuff on conservation subdivisions <coughs> is the one of the very last things. So mm. I'm kind of of the opinion that if you want to imply your priorities, you lead with them. <coughs> so at some point, I'm going to suggest looking at the whole order of the document and saying, you know, what are our top priorities in describing uh, what new subdivisions should look like and really moving up, uh, you know, promoting in importance the, the conservation subdivision concepts, like where you're, you're identifying the contours of the land first and then, you know, you're, you're figuring out what you want to preserve and then you're putting in your lots and that kind of, at least as this guy suggests, and I, I really like his logic, um, that starts to suggest how you make a less obtrusive, um, possibly more intensive in some ways, right? The lots cluster together, but look at the way the, the profile of the lot itself works out with all of this preserved space. Um, yep. And the other, the other good examples of that are, you know, just the completed plans, which are up here. You know, so here's your conventional subdivision, 18 lots, minimum size, two acres. Uh, in this configuration, there's no requirement for undivided open space. In our regulations, it's 20%, but regardless, a minimal amount. So that's 18 lots. You go down here to the most intensive You've got double the number of lots, 36 lots. The lot sizes range from 6,000 to 12,000 square feet, probably not feasible in our outlying areas, um, but the, the logic is still sound. Uh, and then you've got 70% of your lot as undivided open space. So we may not in our um, districts that aren't served by utilities be able to get to this level shown in figure 12, but we might have some options that look closer to these up here, you know, moving from 18 lots to 24 lots, which a developer would favor because he gets to sell more houses. And also, at least in this figure nine, you know, he's showing 60% undivided open space. So to try to get closer to that priority level. So again, it's just a thinking point um, to take into there maybe. Anyone? Yeah. Here, is there any way to get the, a visual into our regulations? Sure, we can add all kinds of visuals. The only, our only limitations are time and technology. So, and I have no real problem um, plagiarizing other people's diagrams. <laughs> you know, uh, but you know, maybe it's something I can work out with uh, a friendly local engineer, perhaps like Janet. <laughs> uh, or try to work on something with, uh, with Dan, although his mapping skills aren't, you know, the, what Carolyn's were. Um, but to have those comparisons, because um, we were talking about, again, Dave and I were talking about this, what's everybody's first instinct is that the larger lots are somehow more ecological when it is exactly the opposite. 
right? Mm -hmm. And if you write it correctly, everybody kind of wins. The, the developer can produce more house lots, which means he can make more money because he can sell more properties, even if the lots themselves are slightly less expensive because they're smaller. You get more open space. You get neighborhoods that are compact and walkable or more likely to be so that they pass the trick or treat test. Um, it, and it's really, to me, it was like a light bulb moment the first time I saw it and I'm, I'm glad I went back. So anyway, so that's it, it's nine o'clock. That's what I wanted to close with. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, so we'll move on to item three and I will entertain a motion. I make a motion, motion to adjourn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll go with, uh, I think it was Alvin. Uh, Mr. Santos, do you second? Yes, sir. Excellent. This meeting is adjourned at 9 o'clock p.m. Thanks, everyone. Have a good week. See you guys Monday night. Same bat time, same bat channel. Night. Night. Night.